everyone. This is a special, epic book review with Katie Martin. <laughs> like that music? I love it. That's a special. Okay. That's my special music, right? I love it. Hey, my friend Katie Martin with blurry flash uh superhero background going on here because she has a hole in her wall but we're not going to talk about that right <laughs> so uh katie and i have gone back for years and katie loves me i know i'm her best friend you know she barely talks to me whatever this is like a way you know this is a really good way for me to force people that pretend they like me to talk to me right this is a, this good is a great idea. start <laughs> <laughs> crushing it yeah. So, so I don't, I've shared this on the podcast before. Um, Innovator's mindset is my baby. That is my baby. And there is no way that book would have ever been written without Katie. So the process of the book, um, I am terrible at editing. I am a, I'm maybe a harsh critic, but you know, you, you know what you know. And as I was writing the chapters, people don't know this, but Katie uh, actually, I would send her the chapters and I'm like, just fix it whatever right so she would go through it and i remember the first i don't know if you remember this the first chapter you like send me all these edits i'm like no don't tell me to fix it just you fix it right because i'm like i trust you so i just like there's stuff that she changed you know to maybe um challenge me a little bit on it uh also maybe clarify some of the things i was saying that yeah. you understood is that fair to say that's fair i love reading parts of it and i'm like i wrote that yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so I gave you credit in the book too. Just it's not like this is not nobody knows this, right? So I am uh so I met Katie years ago. Uh we connected. We we also saw each other in the El Paso airport. I remember that, which is I don't think I've ever been there since, by the way. Uh I have not either. For the most random uh run in. But Katie's written two books and um we are going to focus on her because we're doing some like old school books because I'm really kind of into this, but um, so we're going to talk about learner centered innovation and the light is like wrecking it right now. Um, so I'm going to link both, but also you wrote evolving education. This is actually your latest book. And yeah. before we get into learner centered innovation on uh, Epic book review. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So before we get into that, tell us about evolving education. What is that book? Give us a little, like, give us the one minute trailer of evolving education. Yeah. Um, evolving education was kind of my pandemic baby after it was five years after learner centered innovation. And I was ready to write something more tactical. Mm -hmm. So really with concrete strategies for educators and then the pandemic hit and I was like, I don't know what to write. So I pushed it off. We figured out how to do some remote learning. And at the end of 2020, in the beginning of 2021, mm -hmm. I started writing it again and thinking about the lessons we learned and really trying to help educators think about new and different models for how we could emerge from the pandemic. So it starts with, what do we want for learners? What are the outcomes that are most important? The second part is around the most meaningful learning experiences. And the third part is around like mindsets and how we can think about leaving behind what doesn't work and moving forward with new and different practices. So when you actually wrote Evolving Education, now people are going to always, you know, they're going to want to know this. If you, you, there's a connection to learner centered innovation, yeah. but you could also read them separately. Is that fair? Like, it's not like you have to read them in order, but if you do, it is beneficial. Is that fair to say? Totally. I think learner centered innovation was much more of this vision for what's possible, taking in a lot of research examples from business and other industries and other thought leaders to really think about how we apply those mindsets and practices to education. And one of the chapters was the evolving role of the educator and evolving education really builds on that chapter to think about that evolving role. And then what does learning science say about teaching and learning and what's most impactful? And then what are some things that people are doing in the classroom? So there's concrete examples in each chapter. And so when actually, I remember years ago, uh, we were at the University of San Diego, we were sitting yeah. there in your office and uh, you were telling me stuff and sharing all these incredible things mm -hmm. that are happening, your, your vision for education. And I remember saying to you, you need to start blogging, like you need yeah. to start writing. And the reason I share that, I'm, I'm so grateful that I've been like a little blip on your journey, but yeah. I, I truly believe it has improved you. And I know in the sense that, I know um, 
from my own active re reflection, it really helps you kind of synthesize your ideas, you know, put things together. And I've shared this quote a million times, Clive Thompson, uh, he wrote, anyone can win an argument inside their head, but when you face an audience, you have to be truly convincing and that ability to write. But I, I say this knowing so many people have, you know, really connected with your work and it's left so many people better off because you actively reflect. So that all being said, yeah. let's talk about learner centered innovation. So I got three questions for you. All on, right. On Epic Book Review. <laughs> Wait, I have to say though, here before we go into the Epic Book Review, um, I remember because you're, you know, telling all of our secrets, I remember when I wrote the first blog because you were like hounding me to write it. And it was, it has been the most impactful thing that I've done in my own educational journey. But you kept hounding me to write. And finally, I was like, fine, I'm going to write it. And I was scared to death to share yeah. it. And I said, okay, I wrote it. And you're like, send it to me. And I was like, mm, not ready yet. And you went and found it. You didn't even know what my blog website was. You didn't even know what the title was. But I got off a plane. I was going to Houston for work. I, and I, I don't got, know the story. I don't know this. I got off the plane and you were like, check Twitter. And I was like, my heart was racing. <laughs> and I open up and you had shared my first blog and like, you know, 35 people had read it. And I was like, oh my God, like there's no going back. But awesome. you had, you were just like, so um, you had such a belief that it was going to be an impactful thing for mm -hmm. me. And you, even when I wasn't ready, you pushed me. And yeah. then you were always there every week. I, you know, I think for years, I wrote almost every day, every week for about five years. The last two years has been hard. Um, you write in another space though, too. It's not like- I do. So yeah, so I haven't written in my own personal blog. I've started writing for um, our, my weekly Bright Spots, which I love. But, but every week you shared what I wrote. You'd give me feedback. You, I knew that there was an audience and you're like, this was great this week. Tell me more about this. So you helped me not only in um, my own journey, but it was really just influential. And then you're right. I connected with so many people and it's always helped me clarify my thinking. It's been, it's been an awesome journey. Okay. You know, so this is a little coaching that's going to happen right now. Okay, fair. I know that you haven't. So you said that, why don't you just copy and paste what you write in the one into the other, because I think it's beneficial and it's maybe some people don't even know that you're writing in that space and miss your writing. Like what? Cause I think a lot of times people say, well, this has to be very unique yeah. for this space and this has to be unique. So a lot of times like I'll write something on Instagram and then I'll just take what I wrote on Instagram and I'll just throw it in my newsletter. I'm like, I already wrote a really active reflection. I know a lot of people don't follow me on Instagram, but they read my newsletter and yeah. some people, it, and we all know this in education, sometimes people need to hear things multiple times, right? And that includes myself, right? To, yeah. Before stuff really sticks or, you know, sometimes you'll hear something or you'll read something and one day it says something. And I, I'm, I know this is actually, and we'll get into your book right now. This is something I know people have read your book multiple times and each time they read it, they take something yeah. different from it. So let's talk about learner-centered innovation. Right, let's do so it. Why... First of all, because we're looking at some like books that are a little bit older. Yeah. Why did you write it? Like, do you even remember that process? Like what even got you to, you know, make that jump from blogging and then actually putting it into a book that you yeah. kind of can never change <laughs> ever. It's there forever. It's there forever. For sure. Forever. Um, well, I mean, I think I never imagined myself as an author, never in a million years. Yeah. And going through the process with you, was super empowering. I loved it. I loved being able to think about how to put these ideas together and the reaction of what people got from innovators mindset really inspired me to think about, you know, I had been getting some reaction from my blogs and when we did iMOOC, you know, and I started thinking about, I have ideas that are similar, but different and going yeah. around professional learning about the things I was learning in classrooms as I was doing this work around the country that I thought I started to get the confidence that maybe I could write that and maybe it would be helpful and beneficial. And um, it was a longer journey. I remember writing the table of contents and moving it around a hundred different times and kind of tweaking around the edges. And when I finally just started writing it, um, 
it it felt like it was it was something that would be beneficial for educators. Yeah, and you know it's kind of weird because like I've written several books and I, like it's still I still struggle with that term author like when yeah. people, because it's really you and I think this is what makes your work so approachable is that it's really you sharing learning right yeah. in that space and I think both of you kind of have that approach like hey we talk about innovation this is something we're really passionate about but we're also not the experts, the experts are in the classrooms. We're just sharing some of our journey right. to hopefully help people uh, uh, along the way. And I think, you know, anyone who's looking to write a book, I think it's really kind of just starting with your learning and it, it makes it a more, much more approachable because it's like, Hey, I can, I can take that or I can modify this. I can change this too. And I think that that's kind of that approach, right? Like that you'd see that. I know you're very responsive to sharing your learning as you go. Well, I think that was a big piece of it. I was like, it was going to be helpful for educators, not because I had all the right answers, mm -hmm. but because I was seeing what was working, what was challenging, what opportunities existed in classrooms and schools and systems around the country. And that learning and being able to see that the themes across those different systems that's what I thought was going to be something that people could also learn from as I was making sense of not only what was great practice, but what was possible. And especially coming out of this was 2018, when I think the book was published. So a lot of the learning was like 15, 16, 17, when technology and going one to one was starting to become this big deal. And technology alone, we have talked a lot about this. Yep. We knew it was not enough. It had to be much more about why are you using the technology? What are your goals and how, how are we going to really make an impact on learners? Well, you know, when you're saying something, you and I, and it's kind of interesting because you're like, you and I have very similar beliefs, mm -hmm. um, but we have, I would say in some spaces, different approaches. Sure. And in, in, and I, I know, I know I, I wrote about this. I know you've helped me with my stuff and I don't know if you remember this, but when I hired um, when I was a principal, I hired an assistant principal mm -hmm. who was a little bit of a thorn in my side as a teacher. <laughs> and that was part of the reason I hired her because she would challenge stuff that I would say, but I knew she had the same goals that I did, but she had a different yeah. approach. And that's, that's something that really matters to me is that um, I wanted to hire, I didn't want to hire a second George, right? right? I wanted to hire someone that had a different way would challenge me on some stuff and would help me grow. And, but also would, and weirdly enough, and I'm sure you understand this too, that some of my staff would be more comfortable connecting with her because of how she approached things. And some mm -hmm. of them would be more comfortable approaching me and vice versa. And yeah. that was, that's, and I think that's, you know, that's a really important aspect of education. It's a strengths-based approach, right? Which both of us are very big fans of, but you have different strengths and, being able to see have different orientations to the work and different ways to go about it, you need you need multiple ways of seeing it and multiple people to make it impact. And that's why I got you on Innovator's Mindset because I'm like, you're going to see gaps that I don't, right? Yeah. And that's what I love it. So second question. So the book's been out for a while. What impact have you hoped and continue to hope? Because uh, I, I, it's, a, it's a very relevant book to this day. Yeah. Uh, and it has. Yeah, I mean... I basically hoped to not make a fool out of myself was like goal one. Um, I, I, <laughs> I expectations. I, expectations. Um, I, I really wanted people to be able to um, feel seen. A lot of people say, oh my gosh, Katie, this is like a book I wish I would have written. Mm -hmm. You are inside my brain. And like, that feels awesome to be able to, put something together that people connect with that they can advocate for. They're like, this is what I wanted. And now I have your book to go to mm -hmm. my team of teachers and we can talk about it. These ideas allow us to think about our what ifs. So that to me, and that's the opening of the book is the what if mm -hmm. is that if I could put some ideas out there that would allow people to free themselves from school the way it's always been to align it with the world we live in today and create something even better. Um, 
that would be, if one person could do that, that would have been a success. And I have been so honored over the last five plus years. My favorite thing is to walk into a place and have an educator show me their book. And it's a white cover and it's like brown fingerprints. It's got like Mm -hmm. sticky notes everywhere. And, and, you know, it's just been well loved and used. There's like no greater honor. (laughs) Well, and that, you know, so as you're, as you're talking about this and the, I, I was just looking, um, and I remember that we were talking about the, what if concept, I just love, you know, at the beginning of your book, you write, what if it's amazing how two very small words, uh, can make a big ap- impact on our world and have done so throughout history. And you talked about some of the people saying like, you know, what if, and then talking about ways that can make the world better. And as I, I remember when I was in an administration, I would say things to, my staff and they're like, whatever, like, what does George know? Right. (laughs) Like this guy's an idiot. And, and then you would find, um, someone's work like yourself that would say something very similar to what I was saying. And sometimes to be honest with you, sometimes exactly what I was saying, but it's coming from you. And they're like, Oh my God, did you read Katie stuff? I'm like, yeah, I did. But I would share that with them because some, it was kind of important to me to be able to say like, Hey, no, this is, this is not just a George thing. There's people, but they just needed to see it from someone else yeah. and see that perspective. And I think that, you know, as you, as you brought that up, that's one of the things that I love about this book is that, yeah, somebody might say like, I've been saying this forever, but then they can't get their staff to move forward. And then they say like, Hey, you should check out this book. And then all of a sudden it clicks because they need to see it from some other perspective. So For I sure. love that. Now this is a, this is the last question. And I know that we talked about this before and you're like, Oh, I don't want to answer this. Cause it's a lot, but, um, it's it now, cause we all want to go back and change stuff that we written. And I'm like, mm-hmm. this is like a stone tablet. It feels like it. Right. Sometimes yeah. if you can go back and change something in that book and you know, there's, as you, like you said, is in 2018, what would you go back? One thing, Katie, <laughs> one, one thing. thing, you got to pick one thing, not, not oh. all because I know you got meetings right now. No, it is it is an easy one thing. Okay. I love my mom dearly, but she nailed it when she said this. She said, Katie, I love this book. And it's like three books. Uh, and I was like, oh, she's, you know, so what I would do differently is I would have made it much shorter. I didn't know until it was published that it was like 300 pages. It was my first time writing a book. So I was just writing, writing, writing all the chapters. And at, when it came through, I was like, oh my gosh, as people have said, it's a Bible, which I love people saying it's a Bible, but it is also. It's not war very, and peace though. Like it's not war and peace. It's not that big. Right. But so I would have, if I could go back and do it again, I would go through and see if I could probably cut out a hundred page pages, which is what my dissertation chair said to me. I gave him my dissertation. He's like, it's great. Take a hundred pages out and give it to me again. So I should have used that same theory and I will, I will do it next time. Yeah. But that all being said that it is filled with great information. And I think one of the things that you, you do in your writing so well is this is something that I can kind of pick up. You know, I don't have to like sit and read it from beginning to end or, you know, like it's, it will push you in some thinking. And I, I know a lot of people that have read it will go back to specific parts that really resonate. And, you know, that's a, that's a really hard thing. You you know, I do the same thing in my presentations, right? You want to say everything, yes. right? And then you're like, well, you only have an hour. I'm like, I need five. <laughs> right. right? That's just kind of how you feel sometimes because you're like, there's I don't want to cut anything out. And this is like a problem in education. We, we too often pile on initiatives on old initiatives because we're too scared to get rid of the old initiatives right. because they're like, those are valuable too. And it's like, well, you do got to kind of pick cause you can't do everything all at once, but there is a ton of great information and I am very proud of your journey and seeing all the impact that you're having on educators around the world. And it's not too big to, to pick up by the way. It is not. No, i I joke when I say it's like too big. It's, it is not too big, but if there was one thing I do, I would, I would probably just cut out a few. All right. Okay. All right. Well, Hey, it is awesome to talk to you. So you can check out, um, learner centered innovation and you'll see it in the link down below. And if you haven't, if you've already read that, check out evolving education. It is a beautiful companion to this book. Both books have been absolutely amazing and people just love them. And Kate, I always have loved working with you. You've really helped me grow 
And I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm forever grateful for our connection in El Paso airport <laughs> that changed both of our lives that day when we met each Me other. So too. we really connected. I gotcha. So, Hey, thank you for being on Epic Book Review. Thank you. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. Katie, have a wonderful day. Everyone for listening. Thank you so much for being here. Take care. Thanks, George.